There's a lot of people out there that would tell you not to throw any kicks in a street fight. But today I'm going to give you five. Five kicks that I approve for you to throw in a street fight. Not legally though. Five kicks that I think will keep you from getting taken down, from slipping and falling if you're wearing shoes, keep you from getting punched while you're doing it, and kind of just like regarding overall safety to your body while also doing harm or keeping somebody away from you or off of your buddy. Okay, so I purposefully have keys and phone in my pocket. I'm wearing what I would wear on a regular basis. I haven't stretched, I haven't warmed up. I'm just gonna throw some of these kicks to kind of like further prove this point because you don't get to pick when you are in an altercation. First one is super simple and super boring, which is why we're doing it first. It is a bang, low roundhouse kick. Uh, but there's a key difference that I wanna make in throwing this low roundhouse kick. This is probably gonna be the most like obvious one. If you're standing in front of this guy, and you are within arm's reach, and I throw a roundhouse kick just like this, just a little taster that you would see in MMA fights or kickboxing or whatever, where they're just kind of standing here, bah, they throw that. That is not the intention of this kick. The intention of it, that's the intention of this kick, actually. If we're getting to the point that I know I can't de-escalate it anymore, he starts throwing hands or something, I don't want my low kick to be in front of his hands. For this first one, I want it to be like a basic Muay Thai principle, which is just get off the center line. If I'm throwing a kick that's kind of like a feeler, there's a chance that he's just gonna disregard all human life and just whang, move forwards and punch. Not too uncommon. I want to move off the center line, bang, and ideally utilize the fact that he's gonna have a lot of weight over top of that leg and just crack right at that knee. <laughs> I, I don't want to take the chance of me, bang, maybe hitting something but still being there. I ideally want to get off the center line and throw that kick at the same time. One of the main risks that you're gonna have if you're kicking while somebody else is punching is obvious it's getting punched. Especially if they're the aggressor, they have a tent. So what I want to do is I want to be able to kick while mitigating that risk, step off, whack, right to the leg. Hey man, I know my girl's prettier than yours. You can't fight me because of it. Now, kick number two is going to be maybe a little controversial because they don't work. Frankly, if I had the knowledge that something was about to go down, there was nothing I could do about it, it was about to happen, and somebody was at a space that I could throw a sidekick, that's probably gonna be one of my first moves. One, because I'm not super worried about somebody catching my foot if I'm like this. That happens to me all the time. I practice doing that kind of stuff, so I'm not really super worried about it. Two, because I've got a decent Philly shell. Like, I'm okay seeing punches. Bang, bang, bang. It's not the best, but it's better than the average person's ability to punch. Now, this isn't gonna be anything fancy. I'm not saying, oh, sidekick to the face. Like, jump up, Bruce Lee, pendulum step. Ah! I'm thinking more along the lines of like Wonder Boy, who's snapping it in to somebody's ribs while they're charging in and sitting them down, ideally. And maybe even breaking a rib cage or two, if we're lucky. So, super simple, I can stand here keep myself in a good position where my hip is inside of my foot. I'm kind of sideways, I'm like, hey man, look, this doesn't seem like that's gonna be the first thing that happens. I've worked on the timing of that so much that it's wild. I'm here, I'm just like chilling. Bang. Being able to pop out a sidekick really quick is an option that I think would work. Now, especially since these guys aren't gonna be blocking the body, they're gonna have their hands higher, they're gonna be more worried about their head, being able to sneak something in, and especially something where I can cover a lot of range. It's something that you have to practice all the time in order to make it good when you absolutely need it. I don't know if you watched the video that I did with Icy Mike where we talked about what animals we can beat up, but in that video I talked about how I sidekicked a deer to save my girlfriend's life, pretty much. Maybe it wasn't that serious, but I did sidekick the deer, and it was something that felt like the natural thing to do. I was like, oh, go back! And I kicked it in the head, not hard, enough. It was enough. But we were on grass, it was wet. I didn't slip and fall because I knew what my capabilities were. I didn't practice the sidekick for a street fight. This is important, listen to this, come over here. We're gonna change scenery and everything because this is so important. I don't practice the kicks for a street fight. I practice the kicks to get better at the kicks which kind of allows me to be able to throw them when I want them under different circumstances. We can go back now. With that being said, sidekick to the body for me, since they proved. 
since since it. Next combo is going to be a one, two roundhouse kick. I don't usually like the idea of sitting, staying too close for too long in these situations, especially if they're going with like the, you know, that whole thing that people do. So a lot of people go into fights with like this, bang, bang, and then they back up. They shoot in, they get long, and then they back up. I don't hate the idea of kind of just like, bang, 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 and throwing a high kick, one, because it sets up the momentum, so it doesn't have to be a pure high kick, bang, where you kind of have to force the muscles to go up. I can move forwards and let this momentum that I'm already making with my arms carry through my legs. Now granted, this isn't the option for everybody, but I think it's something that you can practice a lot. You probably do practice a lot. It's basic, one, two, bang. Moving forwards the whole time. That can deal a decent bit of power that it doesn't really matter if it's blocked. Number four and five are definitely my most controversial. Uh, the first one's a spinning wheel kick. I don't wanna hit the bag too hard because I got shoes on. Like, who's gonna see that coming? People don't understand the range of kicks. And people who do understand the range of kicks probably don't get in street fights, unless they're like Mike Perry. What I did is, before I started recording this video, I was like, okay, five, five kicks that I can make work in a street fight. <sighs> Maybe I should've gone with three. Look, man, I believe you. I believe that you're a backgammon world champion. Can you? Look, look, no, no, no. It's totally okay that you skip me in line at the grocery station. What now? What now, hmm? What now? Yeah, yeah, I feel good about that. Maybe that one's not sensei proof for the average person just yet. Keep watching my channel, maybe. Maybe the average will go up, but for a little bit, maybe not. Maybe this should be four things. When I teach karate, I say, karate is to protect yourself and people that can't protect themselves. This one's kind of more for the second part. The next sensei proof kick would be the flying side kick. Maybe not to the face always. But the idea of running up, jumping, and sending your full body into somebody who is mounted and throwing strikes on like a loved one, I am cool with that. Let me go on record to say, I'm cool with that. Like it doesn't even have to have good form like that one. Like it doesn't have to be a bang. If you run and you jump at somebody, now granted, you could miss. So even if you miss, you're still gonna be okay. I would almost honestly rather you do that than see your buddy or your loved one or your mom or something in a bad situation and go bang and throw a hopeful punch. Launch yourself at them. I guess you could hop on their back if you know jujitsu or whatever. You've seen multiple clips like this on the internet. It might not be a bad idea. And that is four and a half sensei proof kicks that I think are viable for a street fight. Kicks that are not necessarily gonna get you caught as often. You're probably not gonna slip up on many, well, maybe the spinning wheel kick. Spinning wheel kick is the most high risk. The main reason that I feel comfortable with the idea of kicking is because I know I've practiced kicking people way more often than people on the street have practiced being kicked. Obviously the main rule is always try not to get into a fight if you don't have to. Odds are that if you're doing some of this stuff to people who are in out, like a long range, you might be the one starting the fight. Take a little second to think about that. Subscribe or I'll kick you. Bang!